Welcome to Berlin, Germany's capital city and home to many historic buildings, including the Reichstag. We're here at the Lilly Henock Sportsplatz for the fourth and final stage of the Hyundai Archery World Cup. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Lilly Henock Sportplatz. Well, there's a few dark clouds in the sky and it's been a pretty fresh morning here, but the sun is just starting to creep its head out. The question is, will the wind play its part today on Recurve Sunday? Coming up, we start with the team medal matches in the women's and men's recurve event. I'm Karen Bashir, and joining me, U.S. Archer Crystal Govin. What a start we have today. Yeah, that women's bronze medal final may very well be the highlight of the morning session. This morning features team match play. Yeah, the top two teams, Chinese Taipei ranked first after the ranking round, go up against Korea in the women's recurve bronze medal match. We shoot over 70 meters here on recurve Sunday, the Olympic discipline in archery. Here's how the two teams got to this bronze medal match. Chinese Taipei, top of the order, taking out Russia in the quarterfinals, Korea Wow, demolished Spain in their quarterfinals, but they both lost in the semis to Italy and to Germany. So it's Korea versus Chinese Taipei for bronze in Berlin. Well, starting to enjoy the sun here in the crowd, packed out in Berlin. Let's go down to the range and welcome the teams out for the women's recurve bronze medal match. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the athletes to the field for the Recap Women's Team Bronze Medal Match. Out first, it's Korea. They'll be shooting on at target two. And San on the left. Jung Ina in the middle. And Jung the Somi on the right. And their competitors are moving into the field. And here come Chinese Taipei. Lin Chia En, Tanya Ting. Lei Chen Ying. Crystal, perhaps a more familiar lineup on the Chinese Taipei side of the shooting line, but uh, well, it's the Korean B team, right? It is. These these young ladies are getting their first chance to come out and show what they can do on the international senior stage. Many of them having competed on the junior stage. Chinese Taipei, they're getting a good amount of support from the crowd here. But it is an interesting lineup with Chinese Taipei going up against the Korean B team. Uh, I think it's fair to say that uh, Korea perhaps have the toughest uh, qualification process. Uh, they've got so many good archers. And the B team here coming through the ranking round as number two seeds here in Berlin. Yeah, there's nothing B about Korea's B team. <laughs> Here we go. Time for the bronze medal match. Chinese Taipei on target one will shoot first. Nine as a sighter there. <laughs> Ray with her teammates' arrow, so let's see if we see a slight adjustment here. See if she can find the middle. Oh. 
Just pulling over to the right there. Each archer will shoot two arrows. They shoot in groups of three. So we'll switch over to Korea now. It's a set system in recurve archery. Beautiful first shot. That's what you want. Just pulling out to the right that time. John making a bit of an adjustment there. And we can feel the wind up here in the booth. I'm not sure what the archers are feeling on them down on the field. Excellent. Sticks it right next to that first arrow. Good first first set of three arrows. So it'd be interesting to see if that seven from the Koreans was uh, affected by the wind or whether it was just a shot not perfectly executed. I think a lot of people out there expected this to be the gold medal final, and instead we're seeing it in the bronze, so really going to be a tight match, I think. Right down the barrel of the gun, right in the middle of the target, setting a score of 54 for the Koreans to go after. If you get the highest score in the set, you get two set points. If you tie, it's one apiece. So she follows up the seven with an eight. Still on the right side and a little high, so curious to see if she, oh, yep, I just see her reaching down. She is making a slight adjustment. You can see they're on the left side of the screen. Well, back in the 10, they had an opportunity to nick the points in the first set. In the end, they needed a 10 to draw level, so it's all square between Chinese Taipei and Korea. Oh Kyo Moon having a chat. I think uh, it's Jeon that uh, is uh, getting most of the instruction. Yeah, we see big smiles on the face, though. They're relaxed out there. They're having fun. In set system in the team round, it's first team to five points, set points. It's going to win this match. Well, here is John. She shot a seven to start with out to the right, made an adjustment, and then not quite enough shooting to the eight, and then made a bigger adjustment, Crystal. Yeah, we saw that, so it'll be really interesting to see where this, this first arrow of the next end goes for her. Looking fairly relaxed. Ni Ta Chi there, the Chinese Taipei coach, also in consultation with the team. Nice little cheer to start start the end. And the great thing about team round, you really see the camaraderie amongst the archers. The teams that really get along, you're going to see winning matches. Oh, it's all smiles in the Korean camp, a little bit more stoic from the Chinese Taipei side of the shooting line. Can definitely see the flags down at the far end of the field. We do have some wind down there, and 70 meters is a long way. It's definitely going to be impacting their arrows. A blustery start to the bronze medal match. Chinese Taipei all square with Korea. We start set two. Yeah, 
干脆啊。So all three of their arrows were on the high side. So again, we'll see if they make an adjustment for the next net, half of the end. Bring those arrows down a little bit. Solid process from Anne puts it into the nine. Now, let's see what adjustments John has made. And it looks like it worked. Puts it in the yellow this time. Nice view here. You can see how straight in alignment these archers are. Their elbow is right in line with that arrow line. So I'll square through three arrows with three more to shoot for each team. Chance to put the pressure on the Koreans here for Chinese Taipei. Seven. Well, it's actually an eight. Could uh, be painful for Chinese Taipei. Opens the door a little bit for Korea. So she's going to want to put a ten down there to make sure that they have a cushion to keep this set tied. It's a great group down there. Just just a little on the high side. Okay. Korea can afford three nines here to tie the set. Anything above that is going to give them the set win. Big opportunity here, a nine. Will square things up again in the second set. A 10 will give Korea a 3 1 lead. And they take it. So three set points to one for Korea. Blustery start for the two teams here in the bronze medal match, but Korea have dialed into the center by the looks of things. Yeah, it looked really solid that time. And as we see in recurve with the set system, one point and you suddenly find yourself at a 3-1 deficit. You see the archers checking their arrows here. They're checking their knocks, checking their veins, making sure all their arrows are still in good condition before they shoot them. Well, Crystal, you mentioned about the elbow here. That's a great shot, isn't it? Yes, beautiful. Perfectly in alignment with that arrow. Yeah, got good technique there. And Korea finishing with the 10 they needed to steal the set points. Have taken a two-point lead. And you talked about camaraderie. Well, they look like they're here for business. They're relaxed, but focused. Exactly. A few smiles on the face of the Chinese Taipei athletes as well. Again, it's shooting first, Chinese Taipei, and Korea is able to clinch the match with a win in this set. So Chinese Taipei... Well, with a target score of five Taipei. points, if Korea take the support. points in this set, it's all done. Exactly. Team round is a little shorter than individual, so just five points is all you need to win the match. Well, a healthy crowd being treated to some very high level archery here.
Chinese Taipei trailing by two set points will shoot first. And they need to take the points here in this third set. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's a slight, it looked like she lost a little bit of her arrow right before she shot it coming through that clicker. This is not the start they wanted here. They they have to at least tie the set in order to keep shooting. We see definitely some wind down there picking up. Another high one. So three eights. As Crystal said, not quite what Chinese Taipei wanted. And the question is, can Korea capitalize? Solid nine, so that's a good start. So with three eights by Chinese Taipei, Korea can get away shooting nines right now. Uh, tens even better. Great shot. That was pretty from start to finish. Jim shooting well. Good response. Tanya Ting putting it into the middle. solid group if you move it down it would probably be not much bigger than the 10 ring size so just need to make some adjustments but it uh, may be too little too late yeah okio looking down the scope big opportunity here for korea potential 57 on the cards for korea they have room to maneuver Shaky start for Jung in the first set, but she's found the middle. She's left her teammate Jung just requiring a six to take the bronze medal here in Berlin. And I think it's a ten. Yeah, it's on the line. It's marked as a nine, but it's more than enough. Korea have taken this one in three. They take the bronze medal in Berlin, 5-1 over Chinese Taipei. Well, the, the, the first set was a, a bit of a prepper, really, was it, for both teams? A, a bit of a shaky start with the blustery conditions, but as soon as the Koreans dialed in, that was it. Yeah, it really comes down to who can make the adjustments quicker, who can find that center first. Well, there they are, Ad San, Jun Inna, and Jung Dasomi confirmed as the bronze medalists here in the Recurve Women's Team event. Good disappointment there for Chinese Taipei as they walk off. They'll finish in fourth place, Lin, Tan and Lee. But Korea will be back a little bit later 
to collect their bronze medal. Well, it's a shaky start, that's for sure. That's seven at the start, and then followed by an eight from John. But it's the response that the Koreans had. Chinese Taipei shooting an eight in the second as well. Open the door for Korea. A 10 required to take the points, and that's just what Jun did. In the third set, it was two eights. In fact, three going high, as Crystal said. Those three eights really opened the door. John finding the middle of the target, and Jun finishing things off with a great shot. Korea have the bronze here in Berlin. Coming up now, it's time for the gold medal match in the Recurve Women's Team event. The range extended to 70 meters for Recurve Sunday. Let's take a look at how the two teams got through to this gold medal match. Italy coming through the top of the order with a confident 6-0 victory over India. And they then took out Chinese Taipei 5-1. Great performance from them. But the Germans also shooting so well, beating Japan and then Korea for the very first time. Germany beat Korea to make it into this gold medal match. The Germans delighted to be welcoming their athletes out here. Let's go down to the range to welcome both Germany and Italy out to the field of play here in Berlin. Well, Crystal, we can already hear the crowd getting very excited as we welcome Lisa Unruh, Elena Richter and Michelle Croppen out onto the shooting line. Yes, we can. I think the advantage here has to go to Germany. They have the home crowd. They're definitely the more experienced team. They've shot together for a while now, and I really expect to see them coming out shooting 10th right from the start. Well, fourth man, or woman I should say, on the team. The crowd getting right behind them. <laughs> Michelle's had a great last month on the circuit. She's really come into her own and been shooting really well. Well, they're not just going to hand the gold medal to the Germans. Here come Italy. Elena Tonetta, Chiara Rebiati, and Tanya Giacchieri. The line up here. We see they do have a left-handed archer on their team, which can affect the order you choose to shoot in because how you're coming on and off the line. Oh, the Suns decided to pop its head out for this gold medal match. Just to develop on that, that, that idea, the left and right-handers, what, what exactly do you mean by the order? So the foot, the foot placement coming on and off the line becomes very important because that's what the judges are looking for, foot faults, if you cross the line ahead of your teammate coming off the line. So a left-handed archer is going to want to come off in a different direction than a right-handed archer. Well, Natalia Valieva there, the... So that's uh, Natasha puts over. She, she will be looking uh, to create the order for the Germans. And it is the Germans who will shoot first on target two on the right-hand side. This for the gold medal in the recurve women's team event here in Berlin. Oh, what did I say? <laughs> what did you say? 
They're going to start shooting tens right from the start. You hit the nail on the head there, Crystal. Can it crop and not follow a teammate into the middle? So a little bit of grimace on her face as she let go. I think it was just not a clean release on her part. All is good. Out of Lisa. Many opportunity for Italy already. So two nine, solid start with Germany's eights. Tono braccio davanti. Tiro veloce. Seven eight nine. It looks like uh, they're all square on points, and there was an opportunity there. So let's see if Elena can put another arrow with her first arrow. Give her team a good start again. Oh. Solid nine. Start. Another nice. So she's still on the left side, so I'm guessing she's going to make a couple of side adjustments here. To try to bring that back in. It's a little uncharacteristic from Lisa. Yeah, two eights for Unru. Tiro veloce. Porta. So again, Italy has a chance to capitalize here. Brava. Nova oh, Orissette. No. Nova Orissette. They can keep their arrows in the yellow. They will take Tania, the set. It'll be two to zero. Two in the yellow. So opportunity here. An eight will level the points and they'll share the set points. Anything better, and Italy will go 2 0 up. And it's an eight, so we're all square. 1 1, just like the bronze medal match. We open with a with a tie between Italy and Germany. KG, shaky to start things off. Some great arrows, but then those eights being thrown in from both teams. Yeah, I mean, 70 meters is a long way. A lot can happen. Just a small change. Non è che dovete fare, oddio, devo fare meglio, lunga, lunga, lunga. No. Cubi quanto basta? Lì. D'accordo? Bravissimo. Qua c'è l'acqua. Natalia Valieva there, the uh, coach for the Italian team. Vocal throughout that entire set. Uh, yeah, definitely. You hear her really talking the girls through this, giving them reassurance. Well, we said lots of good arrows, and there was a 7-8 line there for the Italians. They couldn't capitalize on the opportunity that was presented to them by Germany. It's all square in the gold medal match and all to play for still. You hear the crowd getting into it. They're really cheering on that, this German team. Well, the Germans will shoot first again. I'm wondering who is going to dial into the center first. 
fancy whoever starts hitting the middle of the target could well run away with this. So an eight. So she opened with an X, then shot a nine, and now follows it up with an eight. So she's working her way away from the middle. And you can hear the German coach talking to Lisa. Well, that's all going a bit right. Eight. Yeah, and that's her third eight of the match. I'm, again, I'm very surprised. Chance presented again to Italy. Well, a seven there. From Gia Cherry. Okay. Forza Tonna. A solid nine followed up by your teammate. So right now they do have a one point lead. Halfway stage of the second set, we switch back to target two and to Germany. They're all right. They're all going right. Does there need to be some adjustment here? Yeah, I'm not sure what's what's going on. If the wind's impacting them, if it's the way the sun is moving behind the cloud, in and out of the clouds, or what. But yeah, they're definitely moving higher and more right each arrow. Well, Crawford making whatever adjustment she did and pulls it over to the left. And this is the point where frustration can start to set in. You feel like your shots are good and you're executing well, but you can't seem to find that dialed in middle. Nine. The best shot so far from Lisa Unruh. A determined look on her face. But a massive opportunity here for Italy. A maximum will give them 56 points and put them two points up. Good nine. She'll be happy with that. Oh, Marks an eight. eight on the scorecard. I fancy that will... Oh, well, there you go. Already been upgraded. Gia Cherry fixes that seven with a ten. So just a five here will win them this set. A four will make it all square, so... And it's a 10. Good shooting from Italy. They take the set points in the second set and go 3-1 up. Gia Cherry shooting a 7 with her first arrow, correcting that to a 10 with her second. And Italy looking very strong indeed here in Germany against the Germans. Yeah, so the big question here is, can Germany respond in this third end, or is, is Italy going to be able to walk away with this? Because again, team round, you just need five set points to win this match. Yeah, an interesting set again. Ciccheri shooting a seven with her first arrow. The response from Germany well, wasn't what they wanted. They also shot a seven. But Italy finishing strongly. Gia Cherry herself shooting a 10. And then it's Unruh who finishes things off. Unruh, Unruh sort of anchoring the, the German teams. She's not been on her best form at the moment, has she? 
No, it seems like she's a little off. I'm not sure what's going on. She looks very solid up there. If you look at her, her shot is very strong, and you see her very stable anchoring this team. And on the other side, Tanetta looking very strong indeed for the Italians in third, but being supported by her two teammates, Ray Beati and Gia Cherry. So we see that the German team here, very focused, looks on their faces. Again, I think they might be a little, just a little confused, wondering what they need to do to put these arrows in the middle. Well, the wind definitely changed from set one to set two, a bit blustery in the first set, then almost died off completely. We see this, the sun has gone back behind a cloud. That's going to change your impact downrange. Another seven. So she was right on her first arrow, left on her second arrow. Let's see if she can find the middle here. Closer. Yep, certainly better. How is Lisa? Mark the gross. Great view of how strong Lisa is. Just nice and stable here. And Italy's not capitalizing completely yet on some of those mistakes by the German team. That's a 10. It's a good shot there. Oh, Tanetta has been so strong here for the Italian team. Well, if Germany ever needed a big score, it's right now. And they're capable of it. There's a 10. Big cheer from the crowd, the biggest one so far. finish to this second half of the set. Just dropping down into the eight. But a 53. A bit of a marker. You have to fancy Italy though. They shoot a perfect 30 here. They'll get 58 points, and they'll take the gold here in Berlin. Two nines. They have a good group down there. Just an eight for the gold medal here in Germany against the Germans. Tanetta has shot so well. Can she finish this one off? And she shoots a nine as well. 55 out of 60 is enough. Italy take the gold 5-1 against Germany. Hugs all round from Natalia Valieva, the coach for the Italians. They were all very good. Ray Beati 
and Gia Cherry played their part, but Tineta, for me, was the star player on the Italian squad. Yeah, really the difference in that match was that second end. Italy was able to dial themselves in much quicker after that first little bit of rough start for both teams. Well, mutual respect between the teams, warm hugs and congratulations from the Germans. They have taken the silver. There is confirmation that Italy are the gold medalists here in Berlin in the recurve women's team event. But good respectful applause from the German crowd. The Italians dialed in first and then they stayed in the middle. It wasn't the highest scoring of matches, but Italy finished off with a 55 to claim the gold over Germany. Well, it's a shaky start for both teams, sharing the set points in the first set. And it's these eights and Unruh, as you put it, Crystal, oh, characteristically off her game. The seven from Germany. Again, finding the outside red ring and the response from the Italians with two tens to Netta really played her part for the Italian team here, anchoring them through. Set three wasn't the start that the Germans wanted. A seven and Unruh hitting an eight and then the Italians come back. They needed just nines to finish things off. Ray Beati, Giacchieri and Tanetta Deserving winners of the gold medal here in Berlin. Well, you better get that back, otherwise you won't be allowed in. So that's the Recurve Women's Team event done, and here's how things finished up in Berlin. Italy top of the pile beating the home nation in that final career taking the bronze by beating Chinese Taipei. Well that's the women's team event dealt with coming up very shortly. It will be the bronze and the gold medal match in the Recurve men's team event. Well, those colourful bears dotted all over the city. We've got quite a few here in this uh, archery venue. If you're enjoying the live coverage, well, you can follow us in between live events on uh, social media, on the usual places, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, uh, a very, very good YouTube channel, and of course, Instagram. So Crystal, uh, very exciting uh, women's matches there. Now, you, you've had an interesting change, haven't you? You've moved from compound to recurve, is that right? I have. Uh, and was that uh, in, a, in a bid to try and uh, get to the Olympic Games? Exactly, yes. Growing up a swimmer, the Olympics has always been the pinnacle, and you don't have that opportunity with compound, so I decided to make the switch and make a run for it. And I've heard that uh, that's actually the tougher of the switches to make. Going from recurve to the shorter distance of compound, perhaps a little easier than going from a 50-meter range with a compound bow to 70 meters in a recurve. Yeah. It's a little harder and uh, we like to joke that it might not have been the smartest decision. 
And how much does that, we've talked about wind today and it's been up and down, a bit blustery earlier on and then it's settled right down. How much more does the wind affect a recurve archer compared to a compound archer? So the interesting thing is compound, you feel the wind a lot more, it makes it tougher to aim, but it impacts your arrows less. Then recurve, because you have such higher holding weight, you're able to stay stronger in the wind so you don't feel it as much on yourself but it's impacting your arrow a lot more. The arrows are going at a slower speed, traveling a further distance, and those headwinds and tailwinds really play a huge impact on the recurve side. That's something I really had to learn coming from compound. Well, very tough indeed, both disciplines hard, but uh, we're focused on recurve today, and now it's time for the medal ceremony for the recurve women's team event. Gerhard Furnier. Bronze medal representing the Republic of Korea. Die Bronze Medaille aus der Republik Korea. Well, the Korean B team, good enough for the bronze here in Berlin. And San Jun Ina and Jung Desomi. Ishi Schmitz, the German Olympic Sports Confederation Vice President. And the third one, congratulations. With the medals. And the gifts, the Berlin Bears being presented by the German Shooting Sport and Archery Federation Vice President, Gerhard Fernier. These athletes will get a big cheer from the crowd. Couldn't quite bring their A game to the final. Germany. I have to settle for silver here in Berlin. Michelle Kruppen. Elena Richter in the middle there. And Lisa Unruh. Ja, genau. Herzlichen Glückwunsch. Na, Mädels, herzlichen Glückwunsch. Gratulation. Gratuliere. Herzlichen Glückwunsch. Du hast ganz kalte Hände. Ja, ich auch. Herzlichen Glückwunsch. Well, their highlight was beating Korea for the first time in the semi-finals. They didn't quite bring it together for the gold medal match. And that's because these three archers were just very, very good. A great team unit. All playing their part in taking the title here in Berlin. Tanya Cherry. Are Ray Bayati and the strong anchor Elena Tanetta. Well, 
Oh, they'll cherish this That's win. Thank you. And their Berlin Bears, of course. Gold medal for the Italians here in the Recurve Women's Team event. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the national now anthem it's time of Italy. For their anthem. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm round of applause for our athletes. Meine Damen und Herren, bitte geben Sie allen unseren Athleten einen herzlichen Applaus. Well, there we have it. Confirmation of our medalist in the Recurve women's team event. Korea taking bronze. Germany getting the silver medal here on home soil. Italy taking the gold and standing on top of the podium. Good photo op, and I'll tell you what, the sun's come out at just the perfect time here in Berlin. Very fresh this morning. Didn't feel like a July summer morning at all here in the central plains of Europe. Starting to warm up now. Still a little bit of wind in the air, though. That has been playing its part. Archery is a simple sport to understand, but scratch just below the surface and you'll find all layers of complexity. We had a chat with USA archer Matthew Requa to find out more about tuning a bow. Tuning is the act of taking the arrow and matching it to the bow and to the archer. When the recurve archer let goes of the string, the arrow will move around the fingers, causing the arrow to flex because the point of the arrow is moving slower than the back half of the arrow. Not having a tuned bow can cause the arrow to flex like this or to shoot like this or all both of them at the same time, which will cause the arrow to hit high, left, right, just not where you want it to go. Tuning is as simple as putting the knock in the right place, making sure the plunger is in the right place, and making sure you have the right spine arrow and the right crane points. We simply adjust our bow so that the arrow, as it flexes out of the target, it flies towards the target consistently and not erratically. For beginner archers, tuning really only affects you as soon as you start making a consistent shot. So day one, you don't want to tune your arrows, but day 10, when you start getting consistently in the same spot, that's when you want to start. The most common advanced level of tuning is called bear shaft tuning. A fletch shaft has fletchings that stabilize the arrow in flight, while a bear shaft does not. 
and will fly however you tune the bow. The goal is to have both of them fly into the same spot, usually at a set distance around 18 or 30 meters, something that you're really comfortable shooting with. The bear shaft will fly erratically, especially in wind and in outdoor settings. Uh, so 30 meters, you'll get a good idea of where the arrow is going to fly. If the bear shaft is not landing in the same space as the flat shaft, you know that the arrow is not tuned and is not stabilized correctly. If you're shooting this size group at 10 meters, then you should probably be shooting at 10 meters. If you're shooting this size group at 20 meters, you should be tuning at 20 meters. If you're shooting large groups at 30 meters or further, probably should be going back to 20 meters where you're shooting smaller groups. Tuning your arrow at a longer distance than you're capable can be a waste of time. It's much better to use that time to become a better archer. Well, fascinating stuff there. I think uh, you can become very obsessed about all the details involved in shooting an arrow. Well, we can see down the range, the wind is still there and playing its part. It's time now for the bronze medal match in the recurve men's team event. We take a look at uh, how the teams progressed through the competition. The USA had a shoot-off against France in the quarterfinals. Canada, well, they had a 6-0 victory over Slovenia. But the pair lost in the semi-finals. Turkey beating the USA, Ukraine beating Canada. So it's an all-North American affair for bronze here in the recurve men's team event. Let's go down to the range again to welcome the teams out onto the field of play here in Germany. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the others to the team for the Recurve Bears Team Bronze Medal Match. Meine Damen und Herren, wir heißen die Athleten für das Bronzefinale der Recurve Herren Teams. Willkommen. Well, it's the Canadian to lead us out for this bronze medal match. And just like some of the other countries we've seen, Canada sent their B team here, All give these guys some international experience Canada. and get them Australia shooting, and here we Canada. find them in the bronze medal match. Aaron Cox. Aaron Cox, and his Wilson. chance to shine. Brad Fulsing in the middle, and Remy Gervais on the right. On target number one, representing the United States of America. Well, oh, here come the USA. This certainly is not the USA B team by any stretch of the imagination. Brady Ellison leading out, Jack Williams. Matthew Requa. Requa actually, actually standing in the middle there. Yeah, and they actually had two shootoffs back to back in the quarters and the semifinals and had some bad luck in the semis with some wind gusts just caught them at the at the wrong time. So a little disappointed to be in the bronze medal match, I know, but obviously we'll be cheering them on. Yeah, medals are medals, aren't they? The USA will not be affected by that semifinal loss. They'll be very determined to shoot their very best arrows in this bronze medal match. But in some respects, all the pressure's off Canada then. Exactly. They're out here, they just want to have a good time. Their A team took the bronze in Colombia this year, so I think there's a little bit though of they want to prove that they too can take the bronze. Yep, Trevor Gibson there looking on. will be manning the scope and coaching the Canadians. You can hear Brady's wife, Toya Ellison, in the background cheering him on. Yeah, the Slovenian archer. So this for the bronze medal, Brady Ellison of the USA will get us off the mark. 
There you go. What a start from Finish. the Americans. Good sun shot, man. Finish. And you hear Brady finish. giving some coaching to Matt, telling him where he aimed. Yep. And that is the start that they wanted here. Absolutely. Good, strong shot. If they're not qualifying Jack. spots for Tokyo, this team really is out to prove something here. All in the line, that one just in the nine though, but dropping just a single point in the first three arrows, the USA have started very strongly. Aaron Cox will get things underway for Canada and they just need to forget about what the Americans are doing. 8 .8, low Not left. the start that they wanted. Ah. Aimed on. You hear him say aimed on, he's telling his team. Nice and smooth where they need to be. Point, they're going to be happy right, that this is set scoring. You can sh have a bad arrow and forget about it. Because we're not shooting cumulative score like the compounders. It is set system. So you can have a bad end and it's all right. Yep. Hey. Hey. USA aren't having a bad end. Two tens from Ellison. And look at that line. Perfect up and down Good all finish. four of those arrows. Good shot. Nine. Nine. Nine five. Take it all down. Yep. Nine. You're good. Drive it. You hear Coach Chris Webster in the background telling Jack to drive it. Yep. Nine. Well, that's put it out of reach. Canada can only get to 53 points, but you can bet your bottom dollar that they will be trying to shoot their tens here to get themselves ready for the second set. Ten. Ten. Yeah, this is a great opportunity for them to really dial in and get ready for that second set. These are kind of freebie arrows. We like to call them in recurve. You know you've lost the, lost the set, but you still want to use them so you can come back in the second set strong. Eight. Today's not on, quite Brad. as happy Keep as his teammate. Yeah. Good shot there. Showing why he is the anchor of this team, really putting good arrows downrange. Well, the USA started extremely strongly here. Two tens from Ellison, a 57 out of a potential 60. All right, here's his next to the lag. Well, Canada dropping the ball a little bit. The first three arrows, what? An eight and a ten, and then this five from Full Sank. Well, it's the recovery that's uh, all important. Ellison shooting two tens in that set really set the tone going out first for the USA. USA finishing with a 10-9-9. So Requa and Williams playing their part as well for the American team. Crystal, we talked about wind and that really has settled right down here, but what about that sun? It's poking its head out from behind the clouds. It changes the lighting. Yeah, that's something I really found out making the switch from compound to recurve, how much of a difference that sun can make. You're looking at your string angle. You don't have a peep sight to look through. You don't have a scope to line up. So that sun really can impact how you're seeing that string alignment. And that's going to cause lefts and rights. Not really up and down, but you're going to see changes in lefts and rights depending on how the sun 
is hitting their eyes. Well, it was a good recovery from uh, the Canadians for their second three arrows when the set was gone. They still had to shoot three arrows. Landed two in the 10. And they'll want to carry that through into the start of the second set where they will shoot first. So here we go. Start of the second set in the recurve men's team event. This for the bronze medal between the USA and Canada who will shoot first. And that's what they wanted to start. They really needed that to open this set. Gives his teammates some solid confidence. Eight. Eight. So interestingly, that was... That was about where his first arrow was. Nine point five. Nine. Good shot. Good shot. So twenty seven, not a bad start. But the Americans are definitely gonna want to capitalize on this. Good finish. So we see both those arrows on the right side. I'm sure they're telling Jack where to aim. He's probably going to make an adjustment here. Drive it. Well, it did make an adjustment, but they're all on the same line. The height is uh, identical. Exactly. Probably a little bit of overcorrection. We saw left eight out of him. So. Well, an opportunity for the USA has gone by. Canada here could put this out of reach. 9.5 low. Yeah, so Canada definitely, definitely in the driver's seat for this set. He's putting it into the 10, in fact, into the X. So a 10 here is going to put the set out of reach for the U.S. And it's an X. He does. So just like we saw in the first set, now U.S. faces. These are bonus arrows. They have no opportunity to win this set at this point, even if they shoot three tens. Well, Crystal, they must be listening to you as well. You said yep. that the set system allows for a quick recovery, and that's just what Canada have done. Good exactly. So we're going to be 2-2 two -two at the end of this, all tied up. Again, it's the first team that reaches five set points. Yep. Pressure Ten. off. So he went left with his first arrow after correcting, seeing his two teammates. Williams puts this one into the nine. A little bit more central. Still very high. Well, not very high, but they're all going no, they're high. Definitely on the high side. No low arrows by the Americans yet in this match. 12 arrows down range. Well, the recovery was required. Aaron Cox got them off the mark with an X. 
And in fact, all three archers managed to land it in the 10. A recovery was what was required from the Canadians, and that's just what they've delivered. Look at that group. So all square after two sets. And the Canadians right back in this one. Now, of course, I don't expect you to be impartial. You're part of the USA team. Uh, but I have to say, having watched uh, this sport and watched how uh, you guys uh, approach this, your mental fortitude is incredibly strong. Do you still fancy the Americans as favorites here? Yeah, I think the Americans are the favorites. There's definitely more pressure on them to do well. This Canadian team is out there to have fun. But the U.S. women team gave them a little bit of run for their money the other day in the practice range, so. Ellison gets us underway yep. for the start of the third set in this bronze medal match. An all North American affair between the United States Good of America finish. and Canada. Good shot. Nine. So still on the high side we see. But yes, a lot of camaraderie between these teams. If we're not in a match and Canada is, you typically see us cheering for them and vice versa. Crispin comes and spends a lot of time down shooting at the U.S. tournaments. Nine. Take it. Nine. So the question here is how Canada responds. They had a strong second set. Americans have a 28 down range. Another 10 Eight. from Cox. Job, He's found the middle. Good job. Seven, Seven. Right. Mm -hmm. I think we saw that. Sorry, <laughs> we knew the arrows. Not going to be in the middle just by his reaction. Just uh, another overcorrection, perhaps. So this is a huge advantage for the U.S. team. Three good arrows, and they can lock up this set. Yeah, and they look like they've uh, dialed into the middle as well. They've not been that far away from it, to be honest. No. Yep. Another 10 from, well, it's near perfection, really, for Ellison, isn't it? Exactly. Good, strong finish, Matt. Right down the middle, good, strong shot. Yep. Nine. And guess what? We actually got some low arrows this end. Ten seconds on the clock. Yep. Oh, hey. Quick shot, but hits the spider. Confident young man. So just like the first set, we now see the U.S. has guaranteed themselves two set points. These are bonus arrows for Canada. They're just shooting to shoot. Eight left. Come on, Remy. Gervais has uh, the longest hold of the three Canadians. Is that perhaps why he sits in the middle of the group? Very possibly, yes. Nine, nine, right. In fact, that one was probably his quickest uh, <laughs> exactly. release, just as I say it. <laughs> it's a 
lot of times teams will put their fastest archer last. That way, if the timing starts to run down, they can get off a quick shot. So with four set points to two, the U.S. just needs a tie here to get the five points to win this match. Yeah, and the door was opened up by the Canadians here. Gervais with his long hold, just pulling that one. You called it before the arrow was even released. And it's the response from the USA, uh, the near-perfect Brady Ellison shooting a 10. And then with time ticking away, so did Jack Williams. USA in a very strong position here. Definitely. What we've seen so far, though, whoever shoots first has taken the set points. So Canada will go first. So it'll be interesting to see. Are they able to take the two points? Well, here's the set from the USA. And uh, we talked about the arrows being high. Well, a couple of nines in, in the lower part of the yellow. Looks like they listen. They're listening to you, Crystal. <laughs> so they should. So they should. <laughs> Americans very confident. A shooting second in this fourth set, as Crystal said. Whoever shot first has taken the points. Canada need to have a cracking start to this fourth set, as they did in the second. It looks like the wind's picking up a little bit. Look at those flags in the background. We haven't really seen any wind yet in this match, so this could come into play in this set. Just to add another layer of excitement. We start the fourth set. Canada trailing by two. Need to take all the points here. Eight high. Oh, not the start that they wanted. So we hear him say he was aiming right eight. That communication between the athletes so important. Oh my God. Again, another one's I been pulled from Gervais. Where did that end up? I think it's black blue line. Four, indeed. Nice and smooth. And that really could be curtains for the Canadians. Good strong shot, Brady. Good timing. So pressure's off here for the Americans. They know they can just shoot their shots and they can take this set. Yep. Good X. Massive opportunity. Good finish, Matt. Good finish, good strong shot, Matt. Through Can you hear Coach Chris shot. in the background? Just like we've talked about before, a very calming voice, really reassuring that the archers standing on the line. Yep. On the line, gets marked as a 10. He looked disappointed after the nine in the last set. But Rukwa hitting a 10 in this final set. Yep. Well, when the door's open, it's not always that a team capitalizes here. Well, you can see that the USA have done just that, leading by seven at the halfway stage, three arrows left for both teams. And again, all they need is a tie here to take the, take the set. Yeah, of course, they'll share the points at their level, seven. and they only need five. Disappointing fourth set from Canada, a seven there. So he's gonna Cox. he's gonna want for pride a good shot. Nine, high right. Eight nine liner. Eight, nine, liner. After right, yes, it's a one. Twenty seconds, Brad. Plenty of time. Nice strong shot. And we hear the Canadian coach in the background. Reassuring. Bit of a long eight, hold here. And again, eight, eight. dropping it into the red. Asterisks indicating that there'll be measures on one arrow from both the teams. And I don't think that's going to be required. Ellison 
on the line with his last arrow of this match. His first one in the red. <laughs> a little uncharacteristic, but again, and eight's fine right now. They have enough of a lead here, and well, they just need to tie this set. Well, they could do it with this arrow. Require putting it into the eight. So level on scores. And now Williams just has to hit the target. You can see the wind has picked up as well. Yep. Yep. Quick so arrow nine. into the nine. Jack Williams confident, did his job anchoring the USA team. And uh, it's Requa with the high five with uh, coach Chris Webster. Ellison. Well, near perfect when he didn't really need tens, he didn't score them in the end. But the USA have beaten Canada. The United States of America will be standing on the bronze step of the podium here in Berlin. That was a great view from the stands of Jack's mom, Matt's mom, Brady's wife, Toya. Very excited to see them take the bronze. In there they are, Brady Ellison, Matthew Requa on the right, and Jack Williams in the middle. A bronze medalist here in Berlin at the fourth stage of the Hyundai Archery World Cup. Well. The uh, eight getting marked up to a nine for the USA as the target judge confirms the USA as the winners. Canada, well, they played their part. They got themselves back in the match. Aaron Cox, Brad Fulsang and Remy Gervais finish fourth here in Berlin. When we take a look back on this match, Brady Ellison was just superb. Shooting into the 10 for the first arrow. Matthew Requa also hitting the middle. But it was the sevens and eights from Canada that opened the door in the first set. And that five really, well, it gifted the points in the first set. But the recovery from Canada in the second, nailing the center of the target, put them right back in the match. Brilliant shot of that one going straight into the X ring. But then Gervais pulling out a seven in the third. Well, it didn't get any better as he hit the four five line. I think that one ended up actually being measured as a five, but you can see the grimace on his face. It opened the door for the USA. And a strong anchor in Jack Williams, supported by Matthew Requa and Brady Ellison. They were the deserving winners. They will be on the bronze step of the podium here in Berlin. Now it's time for gold in the recurve men's team event. The targets being replaced on the 70 meter range here in the heart of this beautiful city. And Let's take a look at how the teams got to this gold medal match. At the top of the order, Turkey taking out Korea in the quarterfinals in a shoot-off uh, before beating the USA in another shoot-off. Ukraine took out China in a shoot-off before beating Canada 5-1 in a strong semi-final performance. So it's Turkey versus Ukraine for gold here in Berlin. Well, it's time to go back down to the range and welcome the teams out here for the gold medal match. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the athletes to the field for the Reaper Fans team. Go! Which Ukraine who will lead out the teams for this gold medal match. Alexei Hunbin, Sergei Makarevich, and Jorge Ivanitsky. Ukraine. Auf Scheibe Nummer 2 aus der Ukraine. 
Alexi Humbi. A bit late to the line, Hunbin. And their opponents on the way to the final field. Ukraine's opponents are Turkey. And what a young team this is. Two 17-year-olds and a 20-year-old. Samet Ak, Ali Aydin, and the old man, Mete Gazos. <laughs> Not often you can say that at 20 years old. Well, for such a young team, Turkey look resolute. Fist bump from uh, Goktuk Ergin, the coach. Typically focused for the Ukrainian team. Born to win. Alexei Hunbin will have you know. But it's Mete Gazos who will get us underway on target one for Turkey. This for gold in Berlin. Solid night to start the match. For fans at home that, that aren't used to this final stage, pay attention when the archers are full draw. Really listen to all that clicking going on. That's the cameras. I know someone from the U.S. that was here sitting in the stands yesterday really made the comment that they couldn't believe how loud the noise of the camera shutters was and how do we as archers handle that. So Turkey opens with a 27. Ukraine has an opportunity to better that. Solid start from Hunbin as well. So a nine here will be a one point advantage halfway through this set. On the line, or is that an eight? That one may well go to a measure. But as things stand, they are level on points. And there we have confirmation that uh, third arrow from Ukraine will go for a measure. The grouping from uh, Samit Ak. You'll notice the Turkey team has changed up the order. We've seen other teams do this. Mete is starting and finishing each of the sets. <coughs> Opportunity presents itself again for Ukraine. Gazos anchoring the team with a 10. But massive opportunity for Ukraine, provisionally on 27 points. Subject to the third arrow being marked up. So it could be 28 points. Nine. Nine. 
Nine's enough. Still on for a potential 56 here and the first two set points. Ivanitz guy putting it into the nine as well. An eight could be enough here if that uh, third arrow gets marked up. A nine will guarantee it. And a great view there of his finger tab. He shoots the fair weather tab. We see more and more archers enjoying that tab made of kangaroo leather. Well, there we go. Confirmation that the first two set points go to Ukraine. They will go down and measure that third arrow, uh, but it's uh, relatively meaningless. Two set points for Ukraine to get this gold medal match underway. Well, the fifth arrow from Turkey was the killer blow, really. A seven here. And then the reply and the response from Ukraine, that last arrow hitting the 10 in the end. 55 to 53, Ukraine still the early lead. Coaches doing their work. Again, perhaps with uh, more to do for the Turkish team. <laughs> Staying fairly relaxed. Ukraine will be delighted with their start, though. Taking the set points early in the match. Really important to start strong, but just as important to finish strong. And their coach, Oleg Osipenko, high-fiving all the athletes as they prepare for the second set. <coughs> Fans are a little quiet for this gold medal match. We also see he's shooting the fair weather tab. Nice view of that. So we're able to hear the coaches very well because the spotting scopes that they're using are mic'd up, making it easy to listen to what they're saying. How is your Turkish? Non-existent. <laughs> Ali Aydin following his teammates into the nine. All three on the right-hand side. They started the first set with a 27. Turkey have matched that in the second. A great 10. Even it's sky up into the nine. They could apply some serious pressure here with another 10. A little bit of shaking there. Oh, it's a long hold as well, isn't it? Yeah, so we're down below the 60 seconds. But somehow salvages a nine. He was wobbling all over the place. <laughs> Great shot, honestly. Nice 10x. 
Uzatmıyoruz Ali devam. Ortaya düz. Ortaya Ali. Dinamik bitsin. Good greeting from Turkey. So one more good arrow, they can start to put some pressure on Ukraine. Gazos anchoring the team. That's gone into the 10 as well. Still an opportunity for Ukraine here. They can afford to drop. Well, a couple of points and still share the set points. But let's keep an eye on that clock down at the bottom. Really could come into play here if they start to run out of time by that third archer. Quick arrow from Hunbin. <laughs> Alleviating the time pressure a little bit as the Ukrainian teammates watch on. Another quick arrow from... Uh, seven. Oh, but it's a seven. So they cannot win. Ukraine cannot win this set. So Turkey's guaranteed the two set points will be all tied up in this match. And you're right. Yeah, watching that time, Hunbin, well, he released his arrow really quickly, but got a 10. And uh, Jorge Ivanetsky, well, shows what happens when you have to release quickly. Exactly. Okay. Good recovery from the Turkish team. Gazos, the uh, well, the elder statesman at just 20 uh, in this team, anchoring them really well, and I think playing a big part in the sort of team spirit and morale. Definitely, and, and we saw his, his opening in qualification was absolutely amazing the other day in that win. Well, he finished it off here with a 10, having followed Samet Ak on his 10. That last 10 really piling the pressure on the Ukrainian team. Back in the match, two apiece. Turkey level with Ukraine for gold here in Berlin. So we're guaranteed at least two more sets here. Again, the t first team to five is going to be the winner. Ukraine also looking to go through their processes and keep their morale high. Two apiece. Turkey will shoot first on target one to start set three here in Berlin. He started every single set with a nine. So two high nines, see if the third archer can correct here, and find his way into the ten ring. Well, all in a line, but an eight presents an opportunity for Ukraine. Hunbin will start their third set. Yeah, that's Turkey's lowest start in any set. They've been 27 27 and now a 26, but an eight by Ukraine. Grimace from Hunbin. Solid X. That's that's what they wanted to see here following that eight. Again, a little bit of a shake, but solid nine. Oh. 
Eight. Wow, yeah, another sure. low one. Another eight. Yeah. I just want to see the that uh, Ak is really disappointed. Yeah, you could tell when he was coming off the line, he wasn't happy with the shot. Well, yeah, Aiden putting it into the 10 ring. He's definitely doing his part in this match. Well, here is the process that Mete Gazos goes through. Anchoring the team. Slightly leant over in his stance. <coughs> and he puts it into the nine as well. So starts and finishes with a nine. A 53, the marker for Ukraine. Big, big opportunity, but Ukraine started with an eight. But they have plenty of time this time. They had 65 seconds left on the clock for three arrows, so time is not going to be an issue. They're going to be able to execute their normal shot timing. Nine. Nine. Even that sky hitting a nine, having followed Hunbin. So an eight will tie the set. A nine or better is going to give Ukraine the set, two set points. Another wobble here. Makarevich. Oh, it's a close one. It's marked as a nine. I don't know. I think that's going to be a measure. Yep. Well, there you go. So it's now marked as an eight with an asterisk, which means we have to go down to the target judge. Ten, nine, 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 eight, eight. X, nine, 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 eight. This is the one. Eight. Marked as an eight. It's all square in points in the third set. Crystal, you said he needed an eight to draw level and a nine would take the set points. Pressure, the big wobble again. Yeah, and we're all tied up now, which means this final set. A tie means shoot off or a team could win outright hitting five points. My question to you though is will uh, the Ukraine team switch Jorge, sorry, switch uh, Sergei Makarevich out of the anchor role? He's shaking all over the place. Yeah, and I don't know his normal shot, so I don't know what he normally looks like. That could very well be his, his shot. It's hard to say. On the recurve side, you definitely see a lot of different form. But when you look at it, it probably, uh, apart from the seven, Ivanatsky has been uh, very, very strong in the match, perhaps not quite as strong as Alexei Hunbin. We'll see what happens, but it's Turkey who will shoot first in this fourth set of the gold medal match here in Berlin. Bravo. So it's called a 10, look pretty close to me. Now marked down to a nine. They really want a strong start here. They want to put the pressure on the Ukrainian team. That's a 10, that's clearly in. It's a nervy pull at the end there. Yeah, yeah. But hit the nine ring, they'll be happy with that. A 28, subject to a measure, could go up to a 29 so for that's Turkey. Th that's their highest start now. Ukraine on the 9-10 line as well. Marked as a nine for now. So both teams have a nine star potentially. 
with their first arrows. That is an eight, though. Even it's Sky going high. Just a gust of wind as he released, and that's pushed into the eight. So, opportunity abounds for Turkey here. They can put this one out of reach, irrespective of both teams having a measure on that first arrow. <coughs> A solid nine. This is really their chance. They can put two good arrows down range and they can win the gold medal in this match. Another eight. A ten to put some pressure on here. Forcing Ukraine to shoot a maximum. Look at that wind. You see a shirt really starting to blow around. Gazos puts it into the nine. So notionally a 54. There is the sock blowing that wind picking up. Just to add to the pressure here on these two teams. So a 29 by Ukraine means shoot off. Subject to the measure. Exactly. Nine. Right. Tens required now. Of course, we are talking provisionally because that measure is going to become so important now. Oh, he's not happy with that. Pushed it into the nine. Now Ukraine need the measure to go in their favour. Boy, you need a solid finish here, Makarevich. Finishes with a 10. So those arrows now become crucial. Those first two arrows marked with a star will go to a measure. We'll have to go down to the target judge. So if Ukraine's arrow gets marked up, we will have a shoot off. 10, 10, 9, 9, 8, 8. Well, we wait for confirmation, but it sounded like Turkey's arrow stayed as a 9 and Ukraine's arrow got marked up to a 10. And it is shoot off. Wow. How important was that measure? Ukraine still in the game and Makarovich affording himself a smile. Even Hunbin has a little grin. Fist bump from the coach, Oleg Osipenko. And just confirmation from the line judge to the uh, Turkish team how that measure worked. Right, shoot off. Go, Crystal. So each arrow's got, each team, each archer is going to shoot one arrow. We're going to add up the score for those three arrows for each team. Highest score wins. If it's a tie, we're going to look and see which team has the closest arrow to the center. Well, the shoot off forced by two arrows that were subject to the measure. Mete Gazos shooting the first arrow on the line. That mark was marked as a nine. Hunbin on the line marked as a 10 and it made all the difference we have a mini set here one arrow from each archer and the crowd getting right behind this one it's a thriller here in berlin ukrainian fans in the crowd and there's nothing more fun as an archer than a shoot off but a shoot off with your team oh what an incredible feeling Look of concern there on that young man's face. 
So what order is Turkey going to go in? Do they put Gazos first? It looks like Samet Ak is getting ready to come out first. Maybe they'll switch to their the, the, the orders for four, five, and six. That's what it lo kind of looks that way. Oh, I'm not sure now. <laughs> Target being replaced just to add to the pressure. What about the Ukrainian team, though? Are they going to change their order? We'll have to wait and see. This is going to be exciting. Makarevich has been anchoring Ukraine throughout the match, but has looked a bit wobbly. They look like they are going in their regular order. Hunbin, Ivanitsky, and Makarevich. And all smiles, because they know they could have just lost the match, so... They're happy to be in a shoot-off right now. Oh, the DJ doing his job to keep everyone entertained while the uh, targets are replaced. Meti Gajos having a little bit of a, a jig to the music. <laughs> Right, so it does look like they're going to go with their 4-5-6 order. Here we go. A shoot-off for gold in the Recurve men's team event here in Berlin, the final stage of the Hyundai Archery World Cup Series. So one archer at a time, alternating. Samit Ak up first for Turkey. <coughs> Nice Lovely. Ten. That's how you start. Great stuff to get the Turkish team off the mark. So how does Ukraine respond here? Hunbin to go first for Ukraine. Nice. To the nine, not too bad, but a mini advantage for Turkey. Can Ali Aydin match Samit Ak and put it in the 10 ring. Oh, into the seven when the pressure was on, the teenager floundered. Opportunity for Ukraine to get themselves right back in this. Huge advantage for Ukraine here. Even oh. guy puts it into the eight. Well tied, one arrow. It's a gold medal match that keeps giving. And it's down to the two anchors. So again, if they tie and score, we're going to go closest arrow to the center. Mete Gazos. In to shot. the 10 ring on the X line. And that is the closest arrow to the center here. So not only do Ukraine need a 10 to draw level on score they need to get it closer to the spider over to Makarovic oh it's in the nine it wasn't bad shooting from Ukraine but Turkey have taken this despite a seven on their second arrow Turkey are the gold medalists here in Berlin just shows you anything can happen in a shoot-off. Wow, I can't believe that seven did not impact this match. Amazing stuff. Got took Ergin, the coach there, celebrating. Ali Aydin, well, got away with a seven. Smiles on the faces of Aydin, Ak, and Mete Gazos. They'll be on top of the podium here for the recurve men's team event. And there is confirmation from the target judge. Turkey are the champions of Berlin. And I think it's a safe bet to see. This is not the last time we're going to see them standing on a podium. Handshakes all around. Very respectful from the uh, teenagers uh, on the Turkish team. Osipenko shaking the hand of his uh, counterpart. Ergin as well, the two coaches showing a great deal of respect for each other. The photo call for this young Turkish team.
jetzt ist der Moment, nochmal für beide Mannschaften großen Applaus zu spenden. Auf geht's. Thank you, teams. Ukraine getting their moment for a photo op as well. But the Turkish crowd, or the Turkish contingent in the crowd, very happy with the performance of their very, very young men's team. Oh, we look back across the match. A seven from Turkey in that first set offered an opportunity to Ukraine, who took it with both hands, shooting a 56. The response from uh, Ukraine was uh, pretty good, but Turkey finishing with two tens and a nine, and this man, Gazos, putting them in the box seat. But it was all square at the end of the third set, sharing the set points. But it was a shoot-off, well, that offered everything. A seven in the middle, but Gazos finishing off with a 10 to take it for Turkey. So that's the men's team event done here on Recurve Sunday. And here's how it finished in Berlin. Turkey taking top spot in a shoot off against Ukraine for the gold medal match. The USA beating Canada in the all American third place playoff. Well, it's been a thoroughly entertaining session here. Archery fans, young and old, enjoying some high quality and some exciting matches, Crystal. Yeah, you can't get much more exciting than a shoot-off in team round. Great for the fans, really keeps everybody entertained. High scores, uh, we're quite used to seeing nines and tens a lot of the time. Today, maybe not so much because of the wind conditions and the light changing, but it makes it ever so exciting, doesn't it? When you don't know if a seven's coming out. We had a five exactly. today. <laughs> Nice view of Jack's dad. Mr. Williams. Yep. Hello, sir. Mr. Guacamole. Well, she looks like she's enjoyed herself here. Uh, the crowd here has been pretty packed out here on Sunday, and they have been given some great entertainment on Recurve Sunday in Berlin, and what a great city it is. Oh, beautiful. Just easy to get around. Took some scooters out the other night. Oh, the scooters are a big thing. You got the app, have you? I don't, but my teammates do. Yes, some of my teammates have also been on the scooters. I won't go any further than that. <laughs> All the hotels pretty close by as well. Really convenient location for this event. And the Berlin Bears. Gotta love been, those. Yeah, they are great. Knocked around all around the city, all uh, decorated in different ways. If anybody wants to see great view of all the different bears, check out Chef's Instagram. Chef Vandenberg. Yeah, he had some fun with the bears the other day. He's got a very popular YouTube channel as well. Turkish coach will be delighted with his team. Let's celebrate with him and let's go down and welcome the medalists out to the field of play here in Berlin. Ladies and gentlemen, the victory ceremony for the recurve man team. Meine Damen und Herren, es folgt die Siegerehrung für recurve and team. Bronze medal for the 
representing the United States of America. Well, we expect to see them competing regularly for gold. They lost in the semi-finals the USA, but they were very strong in the bronze medal playoff against Canada. Brady Ellison, Matthew Requa, and Jack Williams, who anchored the team superbly. They're getting their medals from the World Archery President, Erga Erdina, who's also an IOC Vice President, International Olympic Committee Vice President. Big smiles by Jack's parents. The Berlin Bears become a theme here of uh, this tournament, the Honda Archery World Cup in Berlin. The Bears being handed out by the World Archery Europe Vice President, Hakan Chakirolyu. Ellison, Rikwa and Williams with bronze for the USA. It was a topsy-turvy gold medal match. Ukraine played their part, but in the end had to settle up for silver. Alexei Hunmin. And Jorge Ivanitsky in the middle. And Mr. Shaky, I'm going to call him from now on. Sergei Makarevich. He may have a few words with you about that. It didn't affect him all that much. He was shooting lines no, regularly with that exactly. shape. And I think you may be right. It might be part of his process. The silver medal goes to Ukraine in the recurve men's team event here in Berlin. What an exciting young team this is standing on top of the podium. Big smiles all around. Turkey. Well, they weren't absolute perfectionists in the final, but they did enough from two 17-year-olds in the lineup. Samet Ak on the left, Ali Aydin in the middle, anchored by the most experienced of the three, just at 20 years old, Mete Gazos. He loves Berlin. <laughs> Done pretty well here. Brilliant performance from then in the end. Despite a seven in the shoot off, they came through to take gold. And what an exciting future these three have in front of them. What an experience for them now to listen to their anthem. Well, there we go. Confirmation of our medalists here. Turkey on top of the podium. And a young, exciting team that we're going to see more of. Ukraine with silver and the USA with the bronze medal here in Berlin. Crystal, what a great finish to the first session here on Recurve Sunday.
Yeah, I thought the first match of the day was going to be the highlight, but I got to say it was that final match. Well, there we go. Confirmation. Italy taking the gold in the women's team recurve event and recurve men's team gold going to Turkey. So how did things finish here in Berlin in the recurve team events? Well, here we go. The women's recurve final listings. Italy top of the pile from Germany, disappointed not to win at home. Korea taking bronze from Chinese Taipei. USA taking the bronze in the men's team event. They had a third place playoff against the Canadian, their Canadian neighbors and Turkey, well, the young team took gold from Ukraine in an exciting shoot-off. Men's and women's team events done here in Berlin, but there's much, much more to come from all the Bears in Berlin. Coming up this afternoon, it's the all-important individual matches plus the all-exciting mixed team medal matches. Well, thanks very much for joining us here on Recurve Sunday. There's much, much more to come later on.